we're going to do two constructions. The well, first one is constructing a regular hexagon BCD EFG inscribed in circle A. And remember, a regular hexagon has all angles congruent as well as all sides congruent. So the first thing we're going to do is draw circle A. Now, when you're drawing circle A, I want you to make um, the point in your compass. I want you to put some pressure on that so you can tell where the um, point in the compass was. So you can go back and label it circle A. Um, as you have the indent on your paper. Since I don't, I'm going to mark where my center is going to be first. And then I need to get out my compass and draw a circle. I want to draw a, f a fairly large circle. You can take up as much space as, as you'd like on the page. Just make sure you, when you open up the compass, make sure it fits. So put it to the top, bottom, left, and right. Make sure you have um, a circle that fits before you draw it. So here's circle A. The next thing we need to do is draw point B anywhere on circle A. So here I'll put point B right here. And the next thing we're going to do with our compass is we're going to draw arcs, step three, with the center B radius AB. So I need to measure the length from that point to the center. So I'm measuring the radius. Okay. Once I have that length, we're going to um, draw an arc that intersects the circle. And I'm going to label that point of intersection with the arc as circle C. So there's point C. And then step number four, we're going to repeat this step until we have four more vertices, giving us the six vertices of our hexagon. So go ahead and draw six more. So here would be D. E, whoops. Be sure not to change the width of your compass. I actually have, in order to get it to fit, I do have to reflect it. Now here's my vertice. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now we're going to draw each of the segments to form the sides of the hexagon. So let's do that in red. So here's B, C, C, D, E, D. Whoops, that's off slightly. It's not wanting to start there. E, F, F, G and GB or BG. So there's our hexagon, and the construction is done, but I just want to point out a few things about this construction. Remember, the distance from A to B and then A to C, the distance from any center to the point on a circle is congruent as they're all radii of a circle. So if I have them all congruent, I just I have an isosceles triangle, or six isosceles triangle, each interior angle being 60 degrees, 360 divided by six. Base angles are congruent. So each of these ended up being an equilateral triangle. And I don't need to continue going all around, but I just wanted to highlight that. And so if I look at one triangle, Again, if the central angle is congruent, the arc is congruent, so each arc is 60 degrees, but also, as we mentioned, it's equilateral. A central angle has the arc, which is congruent, and also, too, the chords are going to be congruent. So that, since all angles are congruent, all of the chords are congruent, just to show that it is an equilateral triangle. Now let's move on to the square. So to construct a square, 
that is inscribed in circle A. We're going to start by drawing a circle again. So I'm going to mark where my center is going to be. So let's use pink here, circle A. Take your compass, draw circle A. Move that off to the side. I don't want to close that because I use it again. You're going to draw in step two any diameter. So take your straight edge. You want to line it up so that it goes through the center. So here's the diameter. And label the endpoints the diameters B and C. So what I did was I just created two semicircles, which are 180 degrees each. And then I'm going to bisect the diameter, so therefore I'm going to have four angles, all of which are 90 degrees. So a perpendicular bisector construction again was placing the compass on the end point, opening it up so that your compass extends past the midpoint, and we make the X on each side. So make an arc there, placing it at B, making another arc, Gonna extend down. Should have done both at the same time. And then I need to reflect and place in the compass point on C and make this arc. Okay, I'm done with the compass. And I'm also too gonna take my eraser and get rid of some of these marks because I only need the X's. Now I'm gonna draw the perpendicular bisector. So I'm first going to take, I must need to calibrate the board. So I'm going to start here, it goes through, take my pen, I'm going to extend it. You line up your straight edge so that it nicely goes through. And now I have these two points. So I just took a semicircle, again bisected the diameter, so all four of these angles are 90 degrees. So for the arcs are 90 degrees. Take your segment tool, your straight edge now, and connect the four points on your circle. Label them D and E. So I'll call this one E, so E, B, D, C was my square. So then each arc is also going to be 90 degrees as the arc is congruent to the central angle. And since all four central angles are congruent, all arcs are congruent. And as you can see, the, or the chords are going to be congruent, excuse me. Therefore, all of the arcs are going to be congruent as well. And in this angle here, because this is an inscribed angle to a semicircle, this is 90. This is an inscribed angle, angle of a semicircle, that's 90. Inscribed angle of a semicircle, that's 90. An inscribed angle of a semicircle, that's 90.